What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Got the Full Grip League Tournament here for you all this evening. Round one, we've got Nick Hunter versus Frank Persick. Frank Persick hot off his top 64 finish with Nag Quag at the Madison Regional Championships. It's going to be showing off something a little spicy tonight. He's got his very own Gardevoir GX deck. On the right, we've got Nick Hunter playing his Whimsicott deck, a true battle of the fairy Pokemon, and a real treat here since these are both decks that we don't necessarily get to see all that often. So place your bets now. Who is going to take it? Is it going to be Nick Hunter with his Whimsicott GX deck? I know he does play the Charms as well in his deck, so he could play the Ability Charm on the Whimsicott, which could make it a pain for these Gardevoir GXs to take them down. Also, Nick plays that Tapu Lele, I believe, that confuses the defending Pokemon when you put a Fairy Charm onto it. So Nick does have those tools at his disposal. Frank, a very experienced player, not so confident in how his Gardevoir GX deck is going to perform tonight. Apparently, he was drawing hands out in the shop there before the tournament started and uh, was not feeling super confident. Uh, it is a very fast and aggressive format for a Stage 2 deck like Gardevoir. You can see he's also running the Swampert in his deck. Guardy Swampert did win a regional championship this year at the hands of Jimmy Pendarvis. And it feels like forever ago at this point as we get closer to rotation. But my how this format has changed, that was before the introduction of tag team Pokemon as well. I don't even have a Swampert download. I was looking for a Swampert to throw onto the screen, but I actually don't have one download. That was a while ago where we had Guardy Swampert really uh, taking these tournaments down. Now, Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, Tag Bolt GX, easily being able to dispose of Gardevoir's 230 hit points. 230 is just not quite as much hit points as it used to be. Obviously, Reshiram and Charizard able to hit that 230 mark very easily with its attack as well. Both these tag team Pokemon GX giving Gardevoir a lot of trouble in the current standard format. So I'll be interested to see if Frank's deck can stabilize here. Should be a little bit of a slower game. I don't expect uh, these decks to be super explosive. And we see that Frank is Drawing first here. Ultra Balling away, the Wondrous Labyrinth and Asynthia. No need for the Wondrous Labyrinth here. Both decks are fairy type, fairy dominant decks, and uh, that stadium will not be doing much of anything. We see Frank going for the Tapu Lele GX, and it's going to be using Wonder Tag to search out a Professor Elms lecture. Could expect him to get probably a Ralts, maybe a Vulpix, and potentially a Mudkip, and it looks like that is exactly the trio that he has selected here. Vulpix evolving into a Lolan Ninetales GX will give Frank the option to search for two specific items out of his deck to help set this board position up. The goal is going to be to get that Swampert into play as quickly as possible so that he can start to use power draw. We do see that he's got the Marsh Stomp in his hand, ready to evolve Mudkip on the second turn. Nick, playing Nest Ball down from his hand, is going to be searching his deck, giving it a once over, and seeing if there's anything prized, maybe any card he's specifically looking for. And we see that Cottony coming down into play. He will be looking to evolve that into Whimsicott on the second turn here. Got the Tapu Lele in the active position. And I imagine that Nick just wants to move that guy to the bench. Not necessarily an attacker that he is looking to utilize. 
And we see Frank pushing the Wondrous Labyrinth a little bit further from play. Doesn't want anybody to get confused thinking that Wonder Lab is active. He's got a bunch of supporters to choose from here off of the Pokegear 3.0. And after looking at his hand, I think a Lily is still the strongest choice. You can put the escape board down on the active Tapu Lele and then save the Whimsicott in his hand to evolve next turn after a big Lily here to get things started. I actually have to look up this Tapu Lele to make sure that I'm familiar with what it does. It's got an ability, Charmed Charm. Whenever you attach a Pokemon tool card that has Fairy Charm in its name, from your hand to this Pokemon during your turn, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon confused. So I guess that's uh, gonna be Nick's primary strategy here. And I could see the Tapu Lele being pretty annoying once this board position is established for Frank. Uh, if the Guard of War GXs get confused turn after turn, that could be pretty disruptive. The Guard of War decks traditionally do not have a lot of mobility and it does have a retreat cost of two. So that is something that we could see come into play here. And there's a picture of the Tapu Lele that we see is active. It's got free retreat with that escape board. And we see Nick Ultra Balling grabbing himself a second Cottony, a fairy energy going down onto Cottony there. He's got his own Wondrous Labyrinth, which he could play, but decides not to. And then is just going to pass things off to Frank. Frank has got a three card hand, Marsh Stomp, and is going to Cynthia. So that's a good start here for Frank. Knowing that he's not hitting the rare Candy Swamp at this turn off Cynthia. Going to probably just hedge his bets on not doing that. He would need a very powerful draw here off of this Cynthia for six in order to take a knockout on this Tapu Lele. I mean, it would have to be six absolutely perfect cards, so I don't think that's going to happen. And Nick is uh, correct for leaving the Tapu Lele active this turn. We see Frank go for timer ball, has to flip twice, and double tails. Know that feeling all too well. He's got a Curlia in his hand, so... He's going to evolve the bench Ralts, it looks like, and consider his play forward. He may end up retreating the active Ralts and use Beacon this turn to set up his board position a little bit further. And we see that that is what he's going for. Vulpix's Beacon is going to allow Frank to search for two Pokemon out of the deck and put them into his hand. And we can imagine that he's going for a Gardevoir and a Swampert would probably be the one too that I would want to see here from Frank. He could also get uh, an Alolan Ninetales GX, but Gardevoir and Swampert is definitely a grade A choice. You don't need the Alolan Ninetales GX necessarily, which has a retreat cost of two. If you plan on just pivoting to a Gardevoir next turn, you don't want to get that uh, kind of thick two retreat cost Pokemon there in the active position mixed up at all. So it's going to be Nick's turn now. He's got the Magirna there on the bench as well. Another interesting card for this Whimsicott deck. And the Magirna is going to allow Nick to switch tool cards on his Pokemon with the Change Clothes ability. Change Close reads, once during your turn before you attack, you put a Pokemon tool card attached to one of your Pokemon into your hand. So it is just a once a once a turn ability there, but it is going to allow Nick to bounce these uh, fairy charms around and also potentially confuse the Guard of War here. And Nick putting that Wondrous Labyrinth into play. Could have been very powerful last turn to stop Vulpix's beacon, but potentially... Nick hadn't uh, seen that play coming with the Vulpix on the bench. Frank now has a Gardevoir in play with the Swampert, and it's going to day day change to Dene GX. Definitely a welcome addition to this Gardevoir GX deck in combination with Swampert's Power Draw. 
And Frank also has what appears to be a Nitto Queen in this deck. Very interesting addition there. Can make use of the, uh, I guess if there's triple acceleration energy, which I do see in Frank's hand as well. This is definitely a unique list that we've got going on here. The Nitto Queen line, I have to imagine, is pretty thin because he's got a bunch of other you know, stage two lines. This is a three stage two deck, and Frank does successfully hit that Whimsicott there for, appears to be three, six, nine, 120 damage. Not a one hit KO. I mean, Frank is definitely gonna want to hit one hit KOs. He's gonna confuse that Gardevoir very powerful there with the Tapu Lele. And it looks like he might have an ability charm in his hand, which would just be so good here. He unfortunately does not have any energy in his hand, but I think that is a fairy charm ability, which is going to completely stop Frank's Gardevoir GX from damaging Nick's Whimsicott. And I think Nick makes a really strong choice here going for the Toy Box GX, which is gonna allow him to search his deck for five cards, put them into his hand. So he didn't have any real draw support in that hand. He didn't have any energy. Toy Box GX, definitely the correct call. And with Frank's Gardevoir GX confused in the active, also, that ability charm there. I uh, gotta wonder, where does Frank go forward from here? This is a pretty powerful board position for Nick. Frank does fortunately have that Nitto Queen as a possible attacker here as well. You see, he's gonna start things off with a power draw drawing three cards, and he does have an Ultra Ball. I see a Rare Candy in his hand as well, which means that he might be able to get that Nitto Queen into play. And I don't believe that Nitto Queen has an ability. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway, because Nitto Queen is a non-GX attacker. Does have an ability Queen's Call, but the ability charm only works on Pokemon GX. So Nidal Queen is going to be a valid option here for Frank if he can find that Nidal Queen. It looks like he's just going to grab a Ralts instead. So it's possible that he prized his Nidal Queen. That or he already has it in hand. I did see a rare candy as something that he does have at his disposal. He's just going to retreat and then might see an attack from Swampert. There he is. Swamper making his way into the active position. And now with the addition of triple acceleration energy to this deck, uh, Swamper just gets all that more viable. And we see the Whimsicott does successfully live through that Swampert's attack. Frank has to commit a fairy energy to the Swampert as well because of the wondrous labyrinth in play. But Whimsicott's Fluffy Cotton ability proving strong and allowing Nick's Whimsicott to survive the turn. Question is, how is Nick going to proceed with this hand that he searched off of Toy Box GX? It looks like he's going to target down that to Dene and has a, some different options he can pursue here. He removes the charm from the Whimsicott, brings it back to his hand, and has Field Blower Choice Band. He actually doesn't have a ton of energy on this Whimsicott. I'm a little bit concerned about Nick's all-in strategy on this one Whimsicott here, but he does have 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 16. That is a one-hit KO. On that to Dene GX, Nick actually has perfect math to take out that to Dene and scoop up two prizes for himself. My biggest concern here about 
Nick's board position. He doesn't actually have any fairy energy in this hand or any draw supporters. So if Frank is able to successfully connect with this Whimsicott GX and take it out of play, Nick is going to be left with a single Whimsicott and no fairy energy. See a power draw here coming into play, and he's got an energy lotto as well. Just going to select the fairy energy. Frank is going to be going in with the Swamper again, taking, uh, attempting to take a knockout on this Whimsicott. And Frank completely forgets about the Wondrous Labyrinth, goes to attack, and Nick is like, no, sir. I've got Wondrous Labyrinth in play. You're going to have to pass, which is astounding because Frank, just the turn previous, was uh, remembered to put the extra fairy energy on with the triple acceleration energy in order to announce an attack. So just a turn later, getting punished because of his uh, his own, uh, his own uh, not remembering of the Wondrous Labyrinth. So... Ultimately punished there on Frank's side. Going to be moving on to Nick's turn. Thank you so much, SARS friend, for the Twitch Prime sub. Four months on board, and we see some of those nervous uh, <laughs> emotes coming into play. Yes, I would be nervous too if I was Frank. Yikes. Nick does have a double colorless in his hand and is going to be able to swing into this Swampert. I would definitely switch that Choice Band out for potentially the Ability Charm just so that it has some added protection against Tapu Lele. And also is going to be confusing the Swampert. This mobility issue is going to prove to be a really big problem for Frank. That Swampert has a retreat cost of three... I believe, and is not going to easily be able to retreat. It is a retreat cost of three. So now a Confused Swampert with 100 damage on it did not get to attack this last turn because of the Wondrous Labyrinth. Frank continuing to use Power Draw, wanting to see more resources in his deck. He's going to have to find a Guzma to do anything meaningful. Frank also, I think, has only taken one prize to Nick's three. So Frank appearing to be in a much better board position as well. Or Nick appearing to be in a better board position. It looks like Frank is going to attempt to attack oh no attempt to attack the whimsicott with swamper and flips tails for confusion taking 30 more damage this is absolutely devastating nick is really just doing everything he needs to to take down this gardevoir gx deck with his whimsicots the confusion the flips i mean he's putting frank in a situation where frank has to flip two heads in order to successfully attack or Frank has to flip one heads and then Nick has to also flip tails in order for any of these attacks to connect. See, Nick has a Cynthia here. He's going to shuffle and draw six cards. And not really needing all too much. He kind of has everything that he needs on board already. He's got a nice let loose there. If he wanted to limit Frank's hand size, that would be pretty good. But he's going to be taking that knockout and going to just two prizes remaining. Frank has got to be concerned about this. He's not able to hit this Whimsicott GX with his Gardevoir and I believe has prized his Nitto Queen. So in order for Frank to even proceed with this game, he needs to Guzma up and attack one of Nick's non-fairy charmed Pokemon. And Frank has really dumped a lot of energy 
into attempting to KO this Whimsicott unsuccessfully. He was only able to connect with it once. Then Nick found his fairy charm. We see Frank just has to pass. And I suspect that at this point, Frank has got to be very concerned about, oh my gosh, I think Nick has game. That's going to be it. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. Taking out the Tapu Lele GX for his final two prizes. Absolutely wild. Nick Hunter is going to take it with his Whimsicott deck. And Frank showing off the bottom cards there. Was not able to find his Super Boost. Was not able to find his Nitto Queen. Would have also been very good in this game. Nick moving on to 1-0 with his Whimsicott Tapu Lele Confusion deck. We got Nick Hunter here, fresh off his round one win. How you doing, Nick? Doing good. Cool, yeah. man. Well, congrats. Thank you very Battle much. Battle of the Fairy Decks. Yeah. Whimsicott <laughs> GX taking it. So uh, what inspired you to bring this deck to League tonight? Um, so funny enough, I have Jirachis in the mail. I was going to play Zapdos Jirachi, uh -huh. uh, and they get here tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so I played the other deck I had built, which was Whimsicott with Fairy Charms and Magirna, and pretty much I'm just moving tools around and confusing, making everyone flip coins to see who can attack. Right. We saw Frank there have to go through a bunch of hurdles just to do damage to your Whimsicott GX. Mm -hmm. The confusion flip, which he failed, you successfully blocked a potential knockout. Yes. Right, with your Whimsicott GX's fluffy cotton ability. Right. Yeah. And uh, then the Wondrous Labyrinth coming yes. into play. He he immediately got rid of his, and I was like the only cards that the only Pokemon I have in my deck that it can attack a Fairy type. Right. So I know he's playing like the Neo Queen and the Swampert. I immediately see all that, so I'm like, this can come in handy at least for me. For sure. So I immediate as soon as I had it in my opening hand, he got rid of his, and I put mine down. So. Yes, and uh, it worked to off. your advantage for yeah. sure there, stumping his Pokemon. Now was his Neo Queen in his prizes? Yes, he prized okay. uh, Boost Energy and Neo Queen and a Swampert, so it was a pretty. Uh, the fairy, tough prizing for uh, the ability charm. Yes. Yeah, very good. His Gardevoir is not able to even uh, right. touch a Whimsicott. And I was, I was always moving it back and forth just because I didn't know if he played Field Blower. I, pres I don't know if he would in a deck that's so right. chock full of stage twos. But I was trying to protect it as often as I could. I wanted sometimes Keep I wanted extra hand, damage with yeah. the choice band. So having the two Magirnas out is really nice because each one can only move one tool per turn. So being able to pull two up and move them around pretty much at will at that point is really, really convenient. Awesome. And uh, we saw the Toy Box GX come in handy as well. How do you like that as a GX attack? Um, it's really good. I had him in a position where I pretty much, it, I knew he had to do a lot to attack. Even right. if he could, I had everything. Being able to get five cards pretty much meant that regardless of whether he takes a knockout or not, I'm able to set up the next turn to get at least an attack off. Right. Have another Whimsicott set up and be ready to take whatever... Um, he's able to do the next turn. Good stuff, Nick. Well, congrats on your win, and Thank good luck much. in round two. Awesome. Gearing up for round two here at the Full Grip Games League Tournament, we've got Jesse Parker on the left with his Reshiram and Charizard Tag Team GX deck against Nick Hunter with that Whimsicott deck. We were able to see win round one against Frank Persick's Gardevoir GX deck, a little bit of a blast from the past there. Nick's deck looked to function very well. I think the confusion could prove to be pretty strong in this matchup, but Jesse definitely stays up to, up to date with the newest meta developments, the newest lists we can expect, the His Reshiram and Charizard deck. It's probably going to be similar to the one that we saw did well at the hands of Azul in Madison this past weekend. And if this Reshazard deck from Jesse Parker is anything like the Reshazard deck that Azul played, it means that he is going to be playing four copies of Switch in this deck in order to pivot in and out of these Jirachis and also creating opportunities for Rishram and Charizard to get healed by Moo Moo Malt Miltank. You see Nick is going first, starts with that Magirna there 
And immediately Ultra Balls for Akotney getting that onto the bench. Looks like he's going to be going for a potential turn one let loose here for Cynthia. I'm going to save the let loose for later. I like that. Making sure he gets his board established first with the stronger draw card before diving in with a let loose. Let loose also not quite as strong when staring down a Jirachi knowing that the opponent will be able to Stellar Wish even after drawing their five card hand, four card hand, and then one top deck is a little bit tough. So we see Nick's about to draw his six cards here, wants to find the Tapu Lele, and there it is, another draw card for next turn, and should be good to go. Only thing left to get is maybe an escape board to help retreat that Magirna out of the active position next turn, and a Whimsicott, but I'm sure Nick is definitely pleased with this turn one on his side. We see Jesse has got Acro Bikes, Nest Balls, Switch, and a Welder in this hand. All he really needs is some Fire Energies, and he is off to the races with this Reshiram and Charizard deck. See him going in with Nest Ball first, I think. Looking for a Reshiram and Charizard. Eevee Snorlax could also be good in this matchup. Deals 240 damage. Neither of these tag team Pokemon GX has an ability. So the ability charm from Nick is not going to be doing anything there. And then neither of them gets stopped by any sort of typing abilities like Lightning Charm. So Jesse should have a fine time in this matchup. Double Blaze GX, as we can see there on Rush Ramp and Charizard, also has an added effect of being able to ignore all effects on the defending Pokemon if Jesse's able to load it up with six energy. And we see Jesse considering Fire Energy or Jirachi here. He actually already has the Fiery Flint in his hand, and I didn't see that previously. So he is just going to ditch that Fire Energy, and I think that's a fine call because he can Fiery Flint to just go get four Fire Energies to his hand and Welder. We see him choosing between Fire Energy there and another Nest Ball. He's going to use the Nest Ball, thin his deck a little bit more, and then I think that we can expect to see a turn one welder from Jesse and Jesse just going straight on the aggressive taking out this McGear now now I think I would prefer to see Jesse just go in with a Kiawe here if he can find it or the Volcanion we see him nest ball for Volcanion I think that's a fine play as well if he is able to use that Flare Starter attack to load up three Fire Energies onto the Reshiram and Charizard. There's really no point in wasting the GX attack on this Magirna. So I hope that Jesse decides to save his GX attack for a big six energy swing to ignore Whimsicott's Fluffy Cotton. I think if Jesse does that, then... Nick probably won't be able to find his footing in this matchup because as we saw with Nick's game one, he really likes to load up all his energy on one Whimsicott and hope that the confusion and the charms are enough to stop that Whimsicott from going down. And with Jesse able to play through that strategy with his double blaze GX, I think that, that we could definitely expect to see that there. Jesse's going to grab his four fire energies off of Fiery Flint. He does have a switch and a welder as well. He could welder onto that bench rush ram Charizard, but he's not going to. I don't think I actually saw Jesse use a supporter this turn. Could be wrong, but I think it could have been good for Jesse to welder there so that he had five energy on the bench Reshiram Charizard, but 
he's still just a welder and a manual attachment away from swinging with a six energy Charizard next turn. We see Nick go for the confusion with that Tapu Lele there, attach a double colorless from his hand to the benched Cottony and has a Cynthia to refill his hand. Tapu Lele there confusing the Volcanion is good, but like I said, I suspect that Jesse plays a high count of switch cards so this Volcanium probably will not stay confused for very long. I don't expect Jesse's deck to get stuck nearly as often as we saw Franks did last round. Jesse does have some options here in his hand. We do see he's got a, an adventure back so he can go get the escape board for his Magirna to retreat it out of the active position and then I think I saw a way for him to potentially get the Whimsicott there as well. Or did I not? I did not. Oh, he does. He has an Ultra Ball. Okay. So Nick is going to be using Ultra Ball there, discarding the Ability Charm and Ditto Prism Star to go and get himself a Whimsicott GX, I imagine. The Ditto Prism Star, not going to be the most useful in this matchup because he is not going to end up using that Drift Blim that we see he plays. The Drift Blim, really just a tech for the Weezing matchup. Weezing definitely can be a tough deck for GX decks to play against. The Drift Blim just being able to negate all of that damage, very powerful. So nice little option there for Nick, but getting rid of the Ditto. Not going to be too much of a problem here. Nick has got to hustle and act fast if he wants any chance of taking down this Reshiram and Charizard deck. So we see him swinging in for 3, 6, 9, 100 damage with Whimsicott. Jesse's Volcanion confused in the active and needs to find little combo here to take out this Whimsicott. If he's got Welder, attach for turn, we see Jesse kind of reading that Double Blaze GX. He's like, I'm pretty sure it ignores your Fluffy Cotton, right? And it definitely does. So Jesse's looking to Welder here to his Reshiram and Charizard. I know all too well that that uh, added effect there on the Reshiram Charizard does indeed go through Fluffy Cotton. I've run into that on PTCGO many times. And we see Nick or Jesse does have the Fire Crystal as well as an Ultra Ball. You could use the Fire Crystal to get a Fire Energy back from the discard, but I don't believe he has a switch. So we could see him Ultra Ball for Dedene GX and Dede Change. Fire Crystal back, a Fire Energy, attach it to his Reshiram Charizard, and then Dede Change looking for Switch. That is a very all-in play, but I think that seems like the correct one. We see Jesse does grab the Dede GX, and I think we can expect a Dede Change incoming, which would be very strong here from Jesse. With a few copies of Switch in deck, his odds of hitting it are pretty high. Unfortunately, he's only going to really get one Fire Energy off of this Fire Crystal, even though he's getting all three. The other two are just going to hit the bin. Attaches the Fire and Dead A Change, discarding his hand, looking for a Switch. He's got the Escape Board. That'll do reducing the Volcanion's Retreat cost to one. Evolves to Arcanine, and we're about to see a Double Blaze GX4 knockout on this Whimsicott GX. No fluffy cotton flip whatsoever. And unfortunately, that Whimsicott hitting the bin. Jesse Parker going to four prizes remaining, and Nick without a cottony or a Whimsicott at all. 
That has got to be really tough. And we see Nick actually just has nothing. He has to confuse the Charizard with his Tapu Lele, but he's actually started committing energies to the Tapu Lele. He doesn't have anything else to really do. He's going to promote the Tapu Lele with nothing else on it, and then he might have to magical shot this Reshiram and Charizard. Not an optimal uh, turn of events here for Nick. I'm sure Nick would have really liked a Toy Box GX right about now or something to help set up his hand. But a board with only Tapu Leles and a Magarina is all we got. Jesse's going to have to figure out a way out of this confusion, though. He could just retreat, but he's got to switch. So he's going to switch into his Jirachi and then presumably just attach and retreat to continue plugging away with his Reshiram and Charizard. Heads up play there from Jesse, not using Stellar Wish or chancing it that he could not find a switch card off of that. So I like that, just ditching the energy to continue attacking. Now Jesse will have to continue finding switch cards here to keep the attack up since Nick is going to presumably confuse him again with the Charmed Charm one more time and attack for probably 100 damage with this Tapu Lele. It's got a Choice Band, and Nick actually finds a Judge, so it's not the worst thing for him. I think there's no real point in confusing the Reshiram Charizard I guess there is a point in confusing the Reshiram Charizard because he needs to avoid an outrage. But we do see him just going for the choice band and is going to try to deal as much damage to the Reshiram Charizard as he can. Ideally, Nick will find a rescue stretcher or some way to get that Tapu Lele back and another fairy charm here in order to confuse this Reshiram Charizard so Nick's Tapu Lele does not just get smacked around by this outrage attack from Charizard. Nick ideally wants to find a Cottony as well. I mean, he, he needs to find like five cards off of this and only gets four, right? But he needs like, in order to get back in this game, he needs a lot more than four. He's got the triple acceleration energy that's not doing him any favors right now. And no cottony feels bad. Just going to bring the escape board back to his hand. And use magical shot for 100 on this Rush Ram and Charizard. Jesse is not able to use Flare Strike again since he used Flare Strike last turn. But now has the option to Outrage. Even though his hand is small, doesn't really matter. He's got everything he needs to continue plugging away already on board. It is technically possible for this Rush Ram Charizard to eventually get knocked out before Jesse wins the game. So might be on Jesse's agenda to start finding a backup attacker for this Rush Ram and Charizard. We see him. Go into the discard pile with Fire Crystal. He's going to grab three Fire Energies. I think I want to see him load up the Arcanine here. Just start throwing some energies on there. So that if the Reshiram Charizard were to go down, he's going to be able to finish off the game with that. And the Heat Factory there, definitely a good draw. Nick, next card is the Nest Ball. I'm sure he's got to be feeling a little bit upset about that. If he had just seen the nest ball the turn previous, he'd be in a much better space able to potentially promote a Whimsicott this turn, but he's going to have to sack at least one more prize before we see a potential Whimsicott in play again. He's going to Lily for four here. He's got Field Blower and... Stadium card in his hand, the Sky Pillar. 
prevents, I think it's Sky Pillar, right? Not gonna lie, I don't usually see that Stadium card. Prevents damage to the bench. Oh, it is Sky Pillar. Excellent. Sky Pillar there prevents all effects of the opponent's attacks, including damage done to benched Pokemon. And I think Nick is going to retreat into Cottony. He might be thinking that Jesse doesn't have a way to KO the Cottony, but he's just going to Outrage, and that's just going to be game. I don't think Nick has any way to deal with this. And we see a shaking of the hands there. That's it. Unfortunately, Reshiram and Charizard's Double Blaze GX proving to be too strong for the Whimsicots there. And Jesse Parker moving to 2-0, the Full Grip Games League Tournament. Got Jesse Parker here. What's up, chat? Hat off, hot off his win in round two. Ooh. Reshiram and Charizard, talk to us about the deck you're running tonight, Jesse deck is pretty gas. It's DDG's list that they played, so I it's a good list. I was talking about that before yeah. we got started. I was like, Jesse is always up to date with the mm -hmm. freshest list. Yeah, like, yes. let's see what did well at Limitless. Uh, that looks good. Okay, copy, paste. Easy. There we go, yeah. That's so half, half the battle right there. We were talking about the potential for Nick's deck to maybe play some tricks with the confusion and all yeah, that. Yeah, I was a little worried. I saw that off. I saw his last stream I was watching it because I got done with my game pretty early. And uh, I, did, I didn't even know that was a combo. So I was like, oh, wow, that's really... Uh, that Pretty could be cool, really frustrating, right? yeah. yeah. If the deck didn't play, you know, three Guzmas and four Switches, that might actually be a problem. <laughs> That's kind of what I talked about. I yeah. was like, before the match got started, Jesse, usually up to date with lists, yeah. probably playing DDG's list with four Switch, multiple Guzma. The, the confusion, probably not going to do too much. Yeah, not really. I mean, I got a couple lucky draws there, but um, honestly, the Dene was like the turning point in the game. And, oh, yeah. Like, I Hitting was thinking, switch. Yeah, I was thinking I needed to hit a switch, but I, then I remembered the skateboards get me there too, so yep. it was a safer play than I thought originally. I mean, I could have just went for the safe play and like, you know, did yeah. something else, but I don't know. I mean, I mean that, I that play wins me the it. game, so yeah. might as well. So, I mean, worst case scenario, like... Like, he smacks my Reshi for, like, 120. Like or whatever. you just pass with the... Yeah, I mean, or, or you pass like, with the Volcanion Yeah, yeah. Too, or that too, so. so I definitely agree with that uh, mm. that line of play there. I actually also forgot that a skateboard was a route. I was yeah. thinking, he needs to switch. Uh, I didn't... Yeah, yeah I, I thought that. Because I saw my hand, I was like, ah, oh, crap. And then I was, I was oh, wait, a skateboard. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so very yeah, strong very there. Strong, Double yeah. Blaze GX going through all effects on the defending Yeah, Pokemon. I thought... I didn't think about that in the matchup. And then I, you know, just was like looking at my board and I was like I oh, saw you kind of leaning in yeah. I could tell the aha moment I, I as you were asking, leading in <laughs> like I, I asked Natalie real quick like yeah, this goes through right and she's like yeah and she, I'm like okay we're going for, for this sure it goes um, through Hoopa's scoundrel guard yeah. goes through fluffy cotton on whimsicott GX do you think that Rush Ram and Charizard is a little bit too powerful of a Pokemon yeah a little bit I mean it's just like why did that added effect have to be on the 300 damage attack you know <laughs> It already when I, does 300 when you, when damage. When I first read the GX move, I was like, okay, it's no tag bolt, but, I mean, it's pretty good. But, like, the going through any effect is, like, way stronger than, like, you think at first glance. And then right. just, like, everything that, like, tries to beat you, you have that one way to just get through it one turn. And that's sometimes just enough to win you the Hoopa, game. Hoopa, so, you know, yeah. absolutely and insane. I was a little worried. This list in general, like, I, I like it, obviously. Like, it's really good. But it doesn't play Choice Band, which I think is a little weird. But when you think about it, Choice Band's really only needed in the Picaron matchup. So right. uh, other than that, I think actually it's fine without Choice Band. So so kind of a meta call there. I yeah, mean, obviously I the Choice Band call. does nothing in the Charizard Mirror. Yeah, I mean, it lets you GX for, or, I mean, it lets you kill it without, um, you know, with just three energy into Choice Band. But other than that, it's, yeah, it's not really needed. So Right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, definitely a cool list uh, and exciting yeah, really to see good. it at 2-0 here tonight. Good luck in the rest of your rounds. Thanks, Thanks. for talking to us, Jesse. No problem. Getting ready for the third round of the Full Group Games League Tournament, we've got Andrew Barlow on the right versus Jesse Parker on the left. Barlow going to be gracing us with his baby Placephalon deck here against Jesse Parker with DDG's Reshiram and Charizard deck. We saw Azul finish in second place at the Madison Regional Championships here. 
this past weekend with this list. So definitely a powerhouse of a deck. But Barlow, rocking the Baby Blounds deck. Definitely an intimidating deck to play against if you are Jesse Parker here. Just because of the unpredictability of it, you never know what this deck can cook up. Capable of taking huge one-hit knockouts on Tag Team Pokemon GX. Fully expect Jesse to lean on that Arcanine that he plays in his deck to try and turn through these baby Blacephalons. We see Barlow's getting a pretty substantial start here. He's got some fire energy in his hand, ultra space to get more Blacephalons into play, and then a Poke Gear 3.0. And it looks like he's got a lily there. That is pretty unfortunate if that is a lily because he's just fiery flinted for a ton of fires. But it looks like he does have a welder. Okay, so that is totally fine. Definitely an ideal supporter for him to find. And he'll be accelerating some energy onto these little Blacephalon here. On the first turn, going first, also a huge boost for him. He's going to throw those right onto the active. Finds Lily Jirachi and a Heat Factory. Jirachi coming down. Also great news for him. And Heat Factory means that he'll be able to draw more cards next turn. I like Fire Energy going onto the active. Seems good. But Jesse could potentially punish this Blacephalon here. Loaded up in the active. If, he be, if he's able to launch a... Double Blaze GX on the first turn of the game, which we know this deck does all the time, then we could see that Blacephalon hit the bin. And with three energy on it, that would feel really bad. But it looks like Jesse's hand is actually optimized for a turn one Kiawe. He's got Kiawe and a skateboard in that hand. I don't really see a welder. And he's got no Charizard in his hand as well. So... He is looking like he's probably just going to get Ultra Ball and then potentially go in with a Kiawe. He's going to Ultra Space just to take a look at his deck. Probably see if like Dedene GX is in the deck. And I don't think I terribly mind that. He's going to fail the Ultra Space. Obviously, he doesn't play any Ultra Beast Pokemon in his list. And it's going to consider his path forward. Looks like Fiery Flint potentially coming into play first. And he could, weirdly enough, uh, do something crazy like Tapu Lele for a Welder, right? If he's got a Switch card in his hand, he could Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag, Welder, accelerate to the Tapu Lele, and then knock this Blacephalon out on the first turn of the game. Load it with three energy. Energy Drive would technically get there and allow Jesse to draw some cards in the process. He does have the escape board already in his hand, so I think I saw him pause over the Tapu Lele earlier in his deck search, so we might actually see this play come down from Jesse, which would quickly wipe out this Blacephalon, but if Barlow has the response on Jesse's Tapu Lele, that would be a huge feel bad. It's either that or he's going to go in with Kiawe onto a benched Reshiram Charizard. I think I kind of like the Lele play better, though, just to get that three energy Blacephalon out of the way. And. Looks like Jesse, what is he, stretching his back or something? I don't know quite what they're doing over here. Oh, Jesse had dropped a card. Okay, and was able to grab it. <laughs> I was like, what is he doing? It looks like he had just dropped a card on the floor and they went and retrieved it real quick. That's fine. So I think he's playing an, oh, he just dropped the fire energy again. Jesse, keep your cards on the table. It's going in with the Ultra Ball here. And I imagine is getting a Tapu Lele. I think that's the best call here. 
but we'll see what he decides. He could also let loose. It's an option, too. But we'll see if he sees the Tapu Lele play. And it looks like he does. He's going to grab the welder. And that means that this Tapu Lele is about to go ham. Using Wonder Tag to grab Welder out of the deck. Jesse's going to get some draw power off this Welder as well. I really like this play from Jesse. Yes, he could get punished for it, but giving himself the option to just wipe Barlow's energy off the board, I think Barlow was a little bit too greedy attaching that extra fire energy to the active. Why not? Just put that last fire energy on the bench, Blacephalon. Give yourself a little bit of diversity there. Instead, Jesse going ham lele. Energy drive on the first turn of the game. And Barlow left with his Jirachi and Blacephalon. Opting to promote Blacephalon here makes me think that potentially he's confident in his ability to respond to losing all of that energy there. Looks like Barlow is going to nest ball for another Jirachi and Ultra Space for another little Blacephalon. He's got the Heat Factory and a Fiery Flint in hand. It's got to feel bad losing that three energy though. I mean, I know the, the Baby Blacephalon deck does play a lot of energy, but at this point, he's going to have a significant chunk of that energy in the discard pile. I see there is four energy in his deck and maybe a couple more, so maybe six energy in the deck total. And he's about to draw four of them out. In order to get a one-hit KO, he will have to... Put three of these energy onto the active Blacephalon and hit a fire crystal in order to bring the three fire energy back from the discard pile. And it looks like Barlow is going to play the Heat Factory as well so that he can draw some more cards. And Nest Ball, just to thin his deck a little bit more. Looks like he's going to get another little Blacephalon here. And we'll see if he has the cards he needs in order to pull off this attack. I suspect that he might have to just go in for a Blazer this turn, which would not be optimal for him. He does have the Welder, though, so it looks like he's going to be going for it. And I like that Barlow is thinning his deck right now with Pokegear 3.0. Going to grab that Guzma out of the deck really strong and increasing his odds of finding that Fire Crystal off of this Welder. If he can find that Fire Crystal, he should have the knockout i believe he might be one energy short now too though since he did use the heat factory he's got a retrieval not a fire crystal so he is short this turn the one hit ko he's got three fire energies in his hand right now with one fire and a retrieval Looks like he's going to start diversifying his energy a little bit. And then going in with a 10 damage blazer. That feels so bad. Jesse has another. Oh, and it's not a welder. He's got an acro bike. And this is going to be a classic. Oh, I was going to say a classic acro bike for acro bike. No. He actually pulls the arcanine, a much better attacker in this matchup. So he's going to be able to power up that Arcanine, and we may see an entire game from Jesse where he never actually attacks with Reshiram and Charizard GX. He does Welder onto the Arcanine. Now, if he can find an energy to attach, which I see he's got in hand, he can retreat the Lele out of harm's way 
and just go in with the Arcanine. But I was going to say, does Jesse have a Fire Crystal in his hand? He did opt to use Heat Factory there, discarding the Fire Energy. That would be unfortunate if he did that and did not have a backup Fire in his hand. I would hate to see Jesse miss the knockout on this Blacephalon. But I think he does have a Fire Crystal in his hand, which would make that Heat Factory play very safe. I also don't think that Jesse necessarily needs a, another bench Pokemon here. Could just rely on the Arcanine, but Jesse is going to grab the Eevee and Snorlax. Good option to be able to thin the deck a little bit and just increase his odds of drawing into cards that he does want to see. Looks like Jesse's eyeing up a switch, and he does have the Fire Crystal. That is the Fire Crystal I thought it was, so he does have a guaranteed attack with the Arcanine. If he wants to, he can retreat into Jirachi, Stellar Wish, find another trainer card off the top five, and then switch into Arcanine. Either way, he is going to be getting some mileage here off of this Grand Flame. It looks like he grabbed the Eevee and Snorlax just so that he could get some acceleration with Grand Flame. And he's going to pull those two Fire Energies to charge up the Eevee and Snorlax. So Jesse's board position looking fantastic right now. Barlow does find his Victini Prism Star, though. So we see him go to count the amount of Fire Energy that he does have in his discard piles. He... How much damage is he going to be dealing with Victini Prism Star? He does have the Energy Retrieval, as we know as well. But at this point, we've seen Barlow use a lot of energy, but hasn't done any damage with it. I mean, he's just been drawing a lot of cards. Uh, we do have a lot of Retrieval in this deck, but... I think Barlow is going to need to take some prizes here with this energy or be at risk of potentially running out of ways to accelerate. Uh, I don't know if he plays Wishful Baton in this list either, but it looks like Barlow might be switching into a Flareon GX Victini Prism Star strategy here. Flareon GX's GX attack is very good as well. Both Flareon GX and Victini Prism Star interact with the amount of fire energy in the discard pile. We see Flareon GX there. Power Burner GX. This attack does 20 damage for each fire energy card in your discard pile. And then Victini Prism Star does 20 damage times the amount of fire in the discard pile, but then throws them all back into the deck. Looks like Barlow is kind of prepping for the strategy now and appears to be going in with a Blacephalon. And then once he does attack with this Blacephalon, he will have almost all of the fire energy in his deck in his discard pile. You see he does see that Wishful Baton as well. Very strong here in case Jesse doesn't have access to Field Blower. He would really love to pass that fire energy on his Blacephalon to maybe the Victini Prism Star or just another Pokemon, really. And Barlow does have the escape board, so it looks like we're finally going to see an attack from this Blacephalon here. He's got the Wishful Baton to boot. And... We'll see if he has the fire energy necessary to fireball circus this arcanine for knockout he is going to need three fire energy we see him using rescue stretcher throwing the flurry online back into the deck and i do fully expect that we are going to see a fireball circus for knockout especially since barlow is kind of all in on this Blacephalon in the active position. He does have two fire energies, a fire crystal. He's got plenty of 
access to fire energy here. Five fire in his hand right now, dealing 250 damage to that Arcanine. All he needs is three to take the one hit KO and move down to five prizes remaining. But Jesse being in the lead is a little bit concerning. See Barlow start to suit up that Victini Prism Star. I like that. Just one energy away from an attack on Victini. Jesse does have Let Loose, Marshadow, and a Stellar Wish with Jirachi. So plenty of options here to find that Field Blower. He's got Ultra Balls and Fire Crystal. He also finds a Welder. He does need to Welder this turn to the Eevee and Snorlax if he wishes to attack with Eevee and Snorlax. Things are starting to look a little bit hectic here for Jesse with only GXs in play now. If Barlow is able to knock out the Eevee Snorlax, then all he has to do is clean up that Tapu Lele GX for game. We can see how even though Barlow spent the first few turns of this game not really dealing a lot of damage, there is a clear path to victory here for Barlow, especially if Jesse is not able to remove that Wishful Baton. If that Placephalon can pass the energy off to another attacker, it's going to be very good for Barlow. We see Jesse going in with the welder play here, accelerating two fire energy to his Eevee and Snorlax, Tag Team GX, drawing three cards, find a skateboard and switch. He's got the mill tank there on the bench, but I don't know if the mill tank is really going to come into play. I don't think Barlow plans on two hit KOing any of these attackers. I'm pretty sure Barlow set on taking two one hit knockouts to clean this game up, which puts Jesse in a pretty wild spot. Barlow can win this game in two to three turns pretty easily since Barlow doesn't really plan on revealing any Pokemon GX until later in the game. Jesse's going to need at least four turns, including this one. So Jesse can win in four turns. Barlow can theoretically win in two if he knocks out the Lele and the Eevee and Snorlax. Jesse does have the Heat Factory, still can't find that one Field Blower using Marshadow's Let Loose to shuffle draw four cards. And it looks like he has to go all in with Eevee and Snorlax, Dump Truck Press dealing 120 damage to knock out the Blacephalon. But the Wishful Baton sticking. And Barlow suiting up that benched Blacephalon there. He's got to be happy with that. This has been a pretty ideal turn of events for Barlow in this game. He's going to go in with a nest ball here. Just taking another look at his deck. Probably wants to just eye up how many resources he has left. At this point in the game, sometimes you just burn cards to see how many fire crystals do I have left. How many energy retrievals do I have left? How many energy are left in my deck? And can I afford to make some of these plays that I'm considering? He's going to poke a gear as well. Make sure he's just giving himself a maximum Lily here. See, Lily is the supporter in his hand. That or he's going to Guzma. I think... Guzma could be pretty ideal if he attaches the fire energy to... Oh, he's going in with the... Wow, okay. He's going in with the Flareon GX here, and I believe we're going to see a Guzma on the Tapu Lele GX to go down to three prizes remaining. 
It's a guaranteed knockout there for Barlow, I believe, if he has enough fire energy in his discard pile. And then Barlow could leave himself. Oh, he's just going to Lily. Okay. Evolving into the Flareon and not using it to attack is a very... Uh, very risky play, I feel like. Unless the Flareon's getting a guaranteed one-hit KO on the Eevee Snorlax, which I don't believe it is. Potentially, he was short on energy to KO the Tapu Lele GX on the bench. But it looks like Barlow is still a few cards away from being able to win. Oh my gosh, and it looks like he gets the Fire Crystal Energy Retrieval combo off of that Heat Factory. And it's gonna use Stellar Wish as well, grabbing another Fire Crystal. He is going to be able to knock out this Eevee and Snorlax with that Baby Blacephalon, really gassing the deck out this turn. Barlow hit all the cards he needs to take a clean one-hit KO on this Eevee and Snorlax, and then he's going to have almost all the energy in his deck in the discard pile for a potential one-hit KO for game with Guzma in hand with either Flareon GX or Victini Prism Star, both Pokemon threatening huge knockouts on the bench Tapu Lele GX for game. I can't believe it. This is a huge knockout for Barlow. Taking down the mighty Eevee and Snorlax. Six energy with Fireball Circus dealing 300 damage and taking three prizes in the process. That's a ton of fire energy in Barlow's discard pile at this point. And he's got both Victini Prism Star and Flareon GX on the bench. Guzma in hand. He's got everything that he needs to take the game. And we see him counting the energy in his discard pile, making sure he has enough to KO the Tapu Lele. And the tough thing about Jesse's board position is... If Jesse doesn't take a KO, he's probably going to lose the game. But if he does take a KO on that Blacephalon GX, then that just par powers up Barlow's Flareon GX and Victini Pris Prism Star even further. So Jesse's in a really compromising situation here. He has to attack this Blacephalon. The only attackers left in his deck that can KO the Blacephalon our GX Pokemon, and Barlow is capable of one-hit KOing just about any GX Jesse throws his way. I think the safest route for Jesse to win this game, he has to accelerate onto this Reshiram and Charizard GX, and we see him going for a count here, the fire energy. I don't know exactly how many fires are in Barlow's discard pile. I think it might only be seven or so. Maybe six or seven. He did fire crystal a lot of them back. But we see Jesse going through the motions, reading all of the Flareon GX, making sure he knows exactly what Barlow is capable of. It looks like Jesse is going for a Guzma play here or something. And we see he does find a Guzma. But I'm not sure what he would be Guzmaing. Uh, that Victini Prism Star not in harm's way. I think he needs a welder. He needs to accelerate onto that Reshiram and Charizard with welder. I think that's probably his only route. And even if Jesse doesn't knock out this Blacephalon in the active, Barlow can still retreat it to put two more fire energy into his discard pile, which could get him in KO range for 
the Tapu Lele GX. We see Jesse drawing even more cards. He uses Fire Crystal to bring the Fire Energies back from his discard pile to his hand. Heat Factory Prism Star Stadium to draw three more cards. He's working with a huge hand here, but still a little bit stuck. I don't think he, I see a welder in this hand for Jesse. And if he knocks out the active Placephalon with Tapu Lele, he surely loses the game with a retaliata retaliatory Flareon GX. We see Jesse just weighing his options here, trying to make sure that there's not anything that he's missing. And he's just going to go ahead and scoop it up. Barlow has game on board with Flareon GX or Victini Prism Star. And Jesse saying, where was that welder that I needed? Couldn't find it. Andrew Barlow moving on to 3-0, the Full Grip Games League Tournament with his little Blacephalon deck. Andrew Barlow here out off his round three win, the Full Grip Games League Tournament. How you doing, Andrew? Good. Baby Blacephalon. <laughs> yes. What inspired you to play such a deck? It it was a deck that I thought was worse than it really was. Yeah. It, it's inconsistent, but it can hit big numbers. Huge. And as, single, as a single prize attacker, it gives you the time to stall to try to find what you need. Exactly. Uh, in that game specifically, I was worried that your deck really wasn't doing anything those first couple turns. Yes. And you got blown up by a Lele. I was like, you just <laughs> lost three fire energy. Yeah. That's got to feel pretty bad. But... You saw you had all the time in the world. You really only had to take uh, maybe three knockouts to win the game. Yep. So that definitely proved to be advantageous for you. Mm -hmm. How do you like the Flareon GX and the Victini Prism Star in there? The Victini is really nice because it's sometimes you'll burn through a lot of, if you'll burn through your fire crystals and energy retrievals early. So getting all those back in your deck so you can fire flint them back out is yeah. really nice. For sure. And we saw there, I was worried that maybe you had discarded too much energy early on, but then when I saw the Flareon GX and the Victini, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's cool. Yeah. That's exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. And a way, like you said, to throw all the energy back into the deck to power up Blacephalon's attack later in the mm -hmm. game. Very strong as well. So what did you play against in your first two rounds today? Uh, first round, I played against Picaron. Okay. And in that game, if they can't get a Zapdos plan going, and they have to go with Picaram. If they can't, he 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 tried he tried to tag bolt me out of it. Uh, yeah. But I was still set up enough with three Blacephalons that I was able to just take take two knockouts back to back on a Picaram. Very cool. And then the second round, I played against a Gengar Mimikyu deck. Oh, uh, okay. And it and that was another similar plan of. So uh, you've just been taking out tag teams all day. Yes. Yes, tag awesome teams stuff. are probably the deck's best matchup. Oh, for sure. Yeah. A three-for-one prize exchange, can't mm -hmm. beat it. Awesome stuff. Well, it looks like your next round pairings are up, so good luck in your final right. round. Thank you. Gearing up for our fourth and final round at the Full Grip Games League Tournament, we've got Brady Botner on the left versus Andrew Barlow on the right. Brady Botner has got his Turbo Buzzmosa deck here today against Andrew Barlow. Barlow's fiery baby Blacephalon deck should be a pretty tough match for Brady Botner. Does not play any sort of weakness policies or anything like that in his deck, but we just got finished talking to Andrew Barlow, and as we saw, he's just been blowing up Tag Team Pokemon GX all day with Fireball Circus with such a favorable prize exchange. He doesn't need a lot of time at all to win the game. Only two knockouts separate him from victory here at the Full Grip Games League Tournament. If he could just Fireball Circus to Faramosa and Buzzwole Tag Team GX, then he's going to be able to win the tournament. Brady is going to be looking to, I guess, soften up some Blacephalons with the jet punch attack there and hopefully take a big multiple prize turn with beast game gx but i don't know if there's going to be enough resources in brady's deck to be able to slow 
Barlow's deck down. Uh, Power Plant shouldn't do anything if he plays Power Plant. That won't be of any help. Barlow doesn't play any Pokemon GX abilities. So it might just be a sad day for Brady, though we did see Barlow did say that the Blacephalon deck can be inconsistent at times. So Brady probably hoping that this game is one of those games where his deck is just not very consistent. But as we can already see, Barlow has got a Heat Factory in his hand, so he's going to be good to at least draw a few cards off the top here. And also has a Welder in his hand, so he's going to be able to draw some cards with that as well. I think it's a Welder. It might Actually, it's just a Wishful Baton. He doesn't have a Welder. So he does have Heat Factory. He could whiff everything that he needs here on this first turn. But if Barlow starts with a Stellar Wish Jirachi, he's going to have even more opportunities to find those powerful draw cards off rip. And looks like these players are just waiting for the judge's go-ahead to get this fourth and final round underway in what may be one of the quickest games we've ever seen here. Looking at Brady's hand, it looks like he has maybe four or five grass energy in the deck and a beast ring, which is probably not going to be doing him a lot of good here for starters. And I always hate when this happens in a tournament and uh, you're at your, at your round and maybe there's a delay and the match starting and you're just sitting there and you got a suboptimal starting hand and because of the round delay, you're just sitting there staring at it, just waiting for things to get started. And here we go. Barlow with the power start. He's got three. Jirachis in play. So Barlow is going to have no shortage of ways to search out trainers. I highly doubt that he is going to be dead drawing here. Brady getting the party started, though, with a Greens Exploration. And also a Mistrevious there in the active position, which he can evolve on the first turn with a Dust Stone, but we saw his hand is probably too big to pare down to get a valuable draw there with the Dust Stone. Now, something that I am going to mention, though, is that with all of these Jirachis in play, if Brady is able to Jet Punch a bunch, he could take some multiple prize turns here with the Fairmosa and Buzzwool GX if Barlow is by some miracle not able to find a baby Blacephalon, maybe he prized all four. Anything can happen in the Pokemon trading card game, though it does look like even if Barlow prized all four baby Blacephalons, which might just be what it takes for Brady to be able to win. Even if he did, Barlow still has a Flareon in his deck, still has a Victini Prism Star in his deck. Looks like Brady is just going to pass. And I like this play from Brady, just leaving the Mistrevious in the active position, not giving Barlow more cards than he needs here. And sure enough, Barlow finds Pokegear and Blacephalon. So he's going to be chilling out here, looking for a Welder. If he finds a Welder, he's going to be drawing three more cards. He's got the Pokegear and a Stellar Wish to find Welder. Ideally, would like to find the Welder off the Pokegear. Doesn't find it. So he is in a tough situation because if he uses the Stellar Wish on Jirachi in order to find himself the Welder, then that means that he doesn't have a Switch in hand and is going to need to find Switch off of his three-card Welder draw. 
So we'll see if he finds it here. And sure enough, it looks like he does. So, oh, he doesn't because he goes for the Poke Gear. That must have been an energy retrieval that I saw. So he grabs the Poke Gear, looking for the Welder again. Great consistency booster from Unbroken Bonds. Poke Gear 3.0, allowing you to look at the top seven cards of your deck. Looking for a supporter card you find there, put it into your hand. He's got a Lily. So we're not going to be seeing a turn one fireball circus from Barlow. Looks like he's going to have to Lily this hand, fill his hand up to eight cards as his supporter for turn. And proceed from there. So although it's not as explosive as it could be, Barlow really just needs to stay the course. Lily for, I think, six. It doesn't matter if he takes a knockout on this mischievous turn one. All that matters is that he eventually knocks out this Faramosa and Buzz will tag team GX. We see Barlow just flooding the field with Blacephalons. This could get ugly pretty quick. And Brady just chilling over here. A single grass energy on his Faramosa and Buzz will GX. Mischievous there in the active. And at this point, you probably know the writings on the wall. There are multiple Blacephalons over there. There's three Jirachis in play. There's no way that my opponent is going to dead draw enough for me to overcome this type disadvantage that I'm at. It looks like Barlow is just going to pass turn. It's fine, though, for Barlow. Like I said, he's playing the long game here. Doesn't need to take a turn one knockout at all. In fact, Brady is going to go ahead and knock out that Mistrevious itself with its ability. Gives Barlow a prize and allows Brady to fill his hand up to seven cards. So definitely a strong draw option there. Oh, am I calling it Miss Mag? It's Miss Magus. That's what it, that's what it is. And Miss Magus has the mysterious message ability that we just saw Brady use. It's going to go in with another Green's Exploration. Search his deck for two trainer cards since he has no Pokemon with abilities in play. And we're probably just going to be seeing a Jet Punch here from Brady, but that just feels really tough. And you hate to just get a jet punch. I mean, really, if Brady is able to take the four prize turn with Beast Game GX, which is possible, then he only needs to take two prizes with jet punch. But I'm just concerned that the turns that Brady needs to accomplish this are just not quite there. Looks like he's going for Nest Ball, potentially trying to get another Miss Magius into play. With Duskstone, he is allowed to evolve that Mistrevious into a Miss Magius. On the first turn, it was played, breaking the evolution rules in the game with that Duskstone item card. We're going to see another mysterious message. Ideally, Brady wants to find a couple of Beast Rings here and really just load up his... Faramosa and Buzzwool GXs with energy. And then he's going to be looking at a potential Beast Game GX. And it looks like the Mysterious Message is not actually going to be drawing him a ton of cards here. He's trying to figure out as many ways as he can to pare this hand down. And sure enough, here it goes. I know he's got at least one beast ring in that hand, which he had in his opening hand, but I don't know if I see any others. There's the one, and I think we'll probably be seeing this beast ring go onto the bench, be kind of be a little bit admitting of defeat to put those energy onto the bench. Paramosa and Buzzwall, that or Brady has to accelerate them onto the active and elegant soul for knockout on a Jirachi. That just feels so bad. 
But we do see those energy go down onto the benched Fermosa and Buzzwell, which I think is kind of, it's his only move, really. It's all I can do. He's got another beast ring, so that's good. Two is better than one. And we're going to see four energies on that bench, Fermosa and Buzzwell. But in order for Beast Game GX to take the three additional prize cards, he's going to need eight energy on that Fermosa and Buzzwell. And that is a lot to ask with only two B strings. He's got a ton of grass energy in hand as well. And he's considering there the active. I think that's all he can really do, and he's going to Elegant Soul, I believe, for Knockout. And just put the ball in Barlow's court saying, all right, you know, if you got it, my man, then I'm a goner. And it looks like Barlow's got all the cards he needs for a Knockout and more. He's got Energy Retrieval. Just for one fire, actually, and is going to use the Heat Factory. He needs one more, at least one more fire, and I think that is going to allow him to Welder, but he doesn't actually have the fire energy in his hand to knock out the Pheromosa and Buzzwell. I believe he only has two fire in his hand, no fire. Well, I guess he's got one fire in the discard pile, two fire in his hand. So... He is still a couple energy shy of being able to hit this knockout on the Pheromosa and Buzzwell. He needs three in order to pull it off. If he finds a fiery flint, it's lights out. And he's going to be able to just bring all those energies to his hand. Looks like he doesn't find it. He actually has another retrieval. And the retrievals are only so good right now because... He only has one fire energy in the discard pile. So even though he has a fire crystal, multiple retrievals in hand, he needs to find that fiery flint to bring four fire energies to his hand so he can fireball circle, circus for one hit KO on this Pheromosa and Buzzwell. Looks like he's going to retrieval again for one. And then we're probably going to be seeing a welder here. And that's it. He's only got these two fire energies. Bring them both down. He needs to find a fiery flint. And there it is. The third card. This Faramosa and Buzzwell is a goner. And Brady's got to be shaking his head. Oh, no. This is huge. Barlow going to be dealing as much damage as he needs to to this Faramosa and Buzzwell. Potential 200 damage right there without weakness. 400 damage with weakness to the Faramosa and Buzzwell, bringing Barlow down to just one prize remaining. And Brady's just going to have one Faramosa and Buzzwell to proceed in order to have any shot at winning this game, Brady needs to find a field blower if he plays one. But with the benching of that Eevee, it feels bad. Barlow doesn't even need the Wishful Baton to stick in order to take another one-hit KO next turn. There's enough energy in play now that this Pheromos and Buzzwell is probably toast. We see... Brady go for the Pokegear 3.0, looking at the top seven cards of his deck for a supporter card. And we'll see what he finds here. Taking another look at his hand. Once the Lieutenant Surge appears, it's going to allow him to play up to three supporters from his hand this turn, including the Lieutenant Surge. So I don't know if that's going to be enough, unfortunately. Brady would need a whole lot. I mean, he needs to like judge and also knock out this Blacephalon. Looks like he's potentially going to Guzma something up. But I don't, I don't even think that 
Brady has a Green's Expiration. Green's Expiration is really powerful with Surge because then he can just go get the supporter that he wants out of his deck. And it looks like Brady might be going for just a Jet Punch here. If he's going to use Guzma to bring up one of Barlow's bench baby blounds and just hope that you can't do anything about it. I mean, I don't think there's any other reason to Guzma unless you're trying to stall. It looks like, yeah, we got a jet punch going on. And Brady is just going to hope that that Blacephalon stays there forever. But no. Barlow top decks a welder. He's going to be able to take another huge knockout on this Faramosa and Buzzwool Tag Team GX with the new Blacephalon in the active. And this is looking ugly, which is what we expected. But it is fun to see the Baby Blacephalon deck getting in there and really firing off here. He's got four fire energies in his hand with the Fiery Flint and Welder in hand as well. Really, he's just dry. He doesn't even need all this. Another Fiery Flint. I'm pretty sure he's got it. And he's going to do it. Oh, he's, he's flexing now, chat. He's flexing. He's really gassing the whole deck out, making sure he has every single fire energy in his deck at his disposal. And Brady's like, come on, bro. I know you got it. Just go ahead and show it. So Barlow does have Welder in his hand. He should be able to Welder two fire energies to his active Placephalon retreat. And then he's got plenty of retrieval options as well. But maybe he doesn't have the Welder yet. That's possible. I thought he had the Welder already, but I've been mistaking. Wow, I actually don't think Barlow has it. At this point, I thought I saw Welder in that hand. But I think at this point, I must have seen another card. Both Energy Retrieval and... Oh, no, he's got it. Eh, what are you doing, Barlow? You already got it. So he's got the Welder there. He's got retrievals in hand. Barlow, you know there's no fire energy in that deck. Why are you using Fiery Flint? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's got it. I mean, he's really doing a lot of game actions here. The Blacephalon's only got a retreat to. Maybe he wants to do it a different way. I think, nope. Oh, he wants to do it with Flareon, dude. He, he wants to GX with Flareon. Oh, now he's really bad, man. That's really a BM if I've ever seen it. The Retreat, the Switch, the Fire Crystal. He's just trying to see how much damage he could do to the Faramosa and Buzzwell GX. Barlow out here. He's already dead. Fireball Circus for... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my goodness. That's a thousand damage. All right. Fireball Circus for a thousand damage. And Brady, being a good sport, just I'll be like, all right. All right, Barlow. I see you got game in hand, but I'll let you do it. All right. Andrew Barlow taking the win. With Baby Blacephalon going 4-0, taking out Tag Team Pokemon GX like nobody's business at today's league tournament. I've never seen Blacephalon win one of our league tournaments so far. So that was a pretty exciting turnout. We're going to get Barlow back here to give some co uh, closing comments about his deck. But stay tuned because we are going to be announcing the two winners of the Godzilla movie tickets. You can type movie into the chat for your chance to win a pair of tickets to go see Godzilla Fandango tickets. Type movie for your chance to win. We're gonna get an interview with Andrew Barlow and then announce the winners of our giveaway here shortly. 
All right, Barlow. Yes. Okay. It's quite the flex we saw there at the end of that game. Yes. Have you ever dealt a thousand damage in a game before? Not yet. Uh, so first time. Yes. Pretty good. I don't know that I had ever uh, dealt a thousand damage. I can't mm-hmm. remember, but pretty impressive. So after your 4-0 streak here with the Baby Bliss Ephelon deck, do you think that this is a deck you could see yourself playing again? Yes. Really? It's, it's something I think it catches a lot of people off guard, and they don't know how exactly to deal with it. Because it, it, with the last match, I pulled 300 damage out of nowhere to kill an Eevee Snorlax. Right. Yes, for sure. Uh, it happened all the time. I think that uh, I, maybe one of the only things that I could think of that maybe just shuts the deck down would be Alolan Muck. Stopping mm-hmm. the Jirachi engine would be pretty annoying. But mm-hmm. other than that, being able to trade so favorably and uh, easily take out big tag team Pokemon GX definitely creates mm-hmm. an advantageous board state for you. So mm-hmm. I think a uh, great meta call for any sort of tournament where you think there's going to be a lot of tag team decks. Mm-hmm. For sure. Good stuff. So are you going to be going to the North American International Championships? I am. I'm Excellent to, stuff. Yeah. Do you have any idea of what you're uh, going to be playing there yet? I don't know. Probably something fire-based. Okay. Just because fire seems really good right now. I would have to agree with you. <laughs> Awesome stuff, Barlow. Well, congrats mm-hmm. on your 4-0 win streak here at the Full Group Games League Tournament. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Let's give away these movie tickets and uh, have some fun. Like I said, subs to the channel. Do you get three times bonus luck in our giveaways? And we've got two pairs of tickets to give away tonight. Just go ahead and shoot me a whisper on Twitch for, you know, that's that's how we do it. You whisper me on Twitch. Give you the ticket if you if you win. All right, first winner, you can type movie in the chat to enter. But at this point, if you haven't entered, you know you're a little late, late to the party. All right, our first winner is Dallas the Deal. Oh Dallas, you have won. Oh Dallas, I'm honored. Thank you for tuning into the stream. Dallas is a winner. I haven't announced it. There we go. Announce Dallas the Deal. You are the winner. I, I could see it. I forgot that I didn't announce it. Way to go, Dallas. If you're here, go ahead and raise your hand, Dallas. And uh, we'll get you that uh, ticket here shortly. If you did not win, fear not. Because we're drawing two winners. We've got Uno Moss. Let's do another one. Oh, uh, you guys are going to say it's you're gonna say it's Rick. I already said Moss can win. It's Riley. Riley is also the winner. We've got Riley and Dallas winning tickets today. Munner, I think this might be the first time that Riley won. Riley's been a tier two sub for a long time, so I'm glad that Riley was able to win a uh, win a giveaway there. So congrats to Riley and Dallas. Are they doing tag team tonight? I'm not, um... Hmm. They're not on yet, I don't think, but... Anyways. Oh, it's rigged. Oh, no, the giveaways. Andrew just gives the stuff <laughs> to his mods. No, nope, y'all know. Subs get three times luck. So congrats to Riley and Dallas The Deal for winning the movie tickets giveaways. Hopefully you have fun. Doing that, let's go see if there's anybody to rate tonight. I don't see Riley on, so looks like it might just be time for us to part ways. I don't have Barlow's Blacephal on list, unfortunately, but I'll see if I can talk to him. And uh, maybe we can show it off on tomorrow's morning stream, okay? Tomorrow's morning stream. We might be able to show off baby Blacephal on. So make sure to tune in tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the morning show. Going to be streaming some more PTCGO action and maybe showing off a Baby Blacephalon deck. That could be pretty fun. But thank you guys, as always, for the amazing stream. Big shout out everybody who donated bits, all the subs, new subs, old subs, all the subs. Thank you. Big shout out to the mods as well. And Full Grip Games. Thank you to everybody who supports the store, Full Grip Games. 
by ordering codes, singles, all that from our website, fullgripgames.com. Much appreciated. Orders have been off the hook lately, so definitely two thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for supporting the store and supporting us. 